Good evening, brothers and sisters. We welcome you to our midweek meeting or our midweek prayer. And today, this is our 105th anniversary. So we welcome our brothers and sisters here inside the church and also our brothers and sisters who are listening via Facebook and YouTube. And you know what, brothers and sisters, as we look back, as what the Lord has done and reflect in our church, we cannot fail to remember the milestones that God has been doing in our church. And as tonight, this is the moment of spreading an opportunity to share the love of God. And also, this is the chance to share the goodness of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And before we start, our program, let's pray, let us bow our head. Our Heavenly Father, who is in heaven, we are very much grateful for your love and care that you have given to us. And we are here today to praise you and glorify for the many and wonderful things that you have done to our lives. Our dear Lord, we thank you first as an individual and also as a church that your hand has cared and being with us in everything that we do and we say. We thank you, Lord, for everything and for the forgiveness of our sins. In, our, in Christ's name I pray, amen. For our first song, let's sing, I Found a Friend, hymn number 89. Thank you. 
second song, let's our open our hymnal on hymn number. Three hundred forty three. All the way, my Savior leads me. Let's all rise and sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the gut, from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love, mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalms 10, 3, Psalms 103, verses 2 to 5. May I invite everybody to please kneel as we pray. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful, God, that you have brought us uh, to church this midweek so we can express our gratitude to you for all the sustenance that you have provided to us. We have no power on our own, Father, to provide what we need in life. Even the air we, that we breathe is from you. Sunshine, rain, food on our table, our shelter, clothing, the family, our family's love, all from you, Father. And we come tonight with gratitude in our hearts. May we not only bring our supplications to your feet tonight, Father, but most of all, our praises and our gratitude, Father. May we express them tonight, Father. Bless our program so that um, each heart will be touched by, by your message tonight, Father. Thank you so much. Forgive us for all our shortcomings, God. And may you please bless all the participants that are here to serve and to reach out to every, um, every attendee, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Happy midweek. Wave to the next person to you. Say happy midweek. We are very glad to reach uh, half of the week. Um, for most of us, uh, the first few days of the week has been busy, has been stressful, and maybe uh, some of us has experienced uh, deep sorrow wherever they are and whatever they're doing. So if you came here um, with full stomach, with good health in your bodies, that means we have so much to be thankful for. Do you agree, brothers and sisters? Amen. So tonight, um, we have participants who, ca who all came tonight so to share God's love to you through their parts in the program. Um, tonight's chorister was Sister Nori Rada, accompanied by uh, Sister Princess Hernandez on the piano. Um, I gave the opening prayer, and I'm welcoming everybody to tonight's program. My name is uh, Maria Jean. Uh, our message in song will be given by Sister Misty Bontile. And message in word will be provided and given by Sister Blesenda Verona. Um, we welcome you to, to tonight's program. Please sit back and enjoy God's love. And um, I'm going to give you a, a moment of um, silence. You will have a moment of silence so that you can um, uh, try to remember what blessings you have um, experienced in the, this week how God has brought you at this moment in time where um, the blessings are, are uh, even if undeserved, are given to us. Uh, let's uh, pause for a moment. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. 
When we don't when we don't understand we really need to trust him more thank you very much sister misty for that inspiring music many people are just concentrating on their feelings like the feeling of failure feeling of guilt or sometimes you are mad or the feeling of anger, feeling of um, stress out, or bad trip. But we don't actually trace the source of these feelings. I've seen some people watching televisions, and they are crying. And if the movie is really like a heavy drama, they're really crying hard. And the feeling is there. Sometimes the movie is very exciting, and they're also excited, and the feeling is there. So same feeling with happiness and excitement and bliss and joy and peace. We are more on the feelings, but we never even realize that these feelings came from our thoughts. So the thoughts are producing the feelings. So your thoughts, whether it is positive or negative, will produce the negative or positive feelings. But we cannot just stop on the thoughts because the thoughts is just another creation. The thoughts is created by the beliefs. So meaning what is installed in our mind will create some thoughts. And these thoughts will create the feelings. So today, let's study on the belief. And I hope and pray that after my part today, we will be able to install something that will improve our beliefs. Right now, for the past weeks, I am busy writing a book. And the title of the book is Happiness is Medicine. And this is about cultivating happiness and when we cultivate happiness we really need to cultivate the belief and when we cultivate the belief we need to cultivate the thoughts the feelings are just the result the outcome and later on you will you will be surprised because the feelings will create later on good relationships but again most of us are just concentrating on the relationships, on the feelings, but we miss the most important thing, and that is installing the right beliefs. Right now, the world is so busy teaching us dysfunctional beliefs. So when you hear some music, you watch the television, telesere, or even the news around, the politics and all this uh, uh, current news, they are installing dysfunctional beliefs. And after maybe watching or hearing the news, you'll say, oh, the world is really in chaos and people cannot change and people are hurting me and I will never be happy. And these are all functional beliefs, but the world is installing or downloading beliefs that is crooked and today i hope and pray that we will be able to live in the truth because the truth will set us free hosea is telling us um, my people are destroyed due to lack of knowledge and i believe the beliefs 
will really help us. And I, I know that I know that many of the lessons here in church are really installing good beliefs. Yeah, you listen to the Sabbath school, to the divine worship, and to a lot of worship programs, and they are all installing beliefs. But the problem is, you know, the negative beliefs are more powerful sometimes <laughs> than the biblical truth. And the, the negative beliefs from the media, from the television, are even more attractive than the biblical truth. And that's the sad thing there. I'd like to tell you one story about the beliefs, and it is told by Dr. Um, psychologist Kelly McGonigal, and it's about a good study, and they studied on 30,000 people for eight years, and the study was actually about stress, and they asked the people, 30,000 people, two questions, and the first question was actually, do you have stress? And obviously, the answer was yes. And then the second question was, do you believe that stress is harmful for your health? And they, they, tra they followed the track record of these people, and this is what they discovered. Those people who have stress, they die. By 43%, they had high risk of death by 43%. But this is only true to people who believe that stress is harmful for them. So can you now see? The belief that stress is harmful for you can actually kill. So we have two pathways now. The one that will heal, the pathway for healing, and the pathway for death. The belief that stress can harm you will really harm you. So Dr. Mac. Gunigal said, I was wrong for many years because I kept on saying that stress can kill. But actually, stress can only kill if you believe that stress can kill you. So again, what they have discovered is the blood vessel. So basically, the blood vessel is relaxed like this. But the moment you believe that stress is harmful for you, they saw something that is frightening. And this is the blood constriction. Can you see? And this is one of the reasons why these people die of cardiovascular diseases. And this is also one of the reasons when they uh, discovered in the study the secret of those people who are at 90s and they are healthy. And they, they, those people who are, who are on 50s, but they are sick. The belief that stress can kill. I was telling you last time about Petra, right? People who are emotionally triggering anger, uh, rage and anger. And if you believe that Petra can kill you, surely you will die of anger. But if you don't believe that Petra will just, it's just okay, you are cool, and you know, Petra will not harm you, and then here comes what's happening to your system. There's a big biological change. The moment we choose what to believe, if you believe that stress can harm you, so here comes your stress response. And it's not just like this. You can now imagine the body is loaded with a lot of harmful um, the, um, hormones that will overflow to your system. But the moment you say, oh, I know, I can do it by God's grace. I can handle it. I can find solution. And it's just, um, it is just challenging me. And now this is the pathway that you are entering in the biology of courage. And here comes your blood vessel. Relax. And you know what, what the science discovered? Is it's not anymore. The pituitary is not producing anymore adrenaline. It is producing oxytocin. And the oxytocin 
is now very helpful to all, to all parts of the body. It's not just for the brain, but it is also good for the heart. And this is one of the hormones that they discovered. For those people who are under pressure, same challenge, same pressure, but they can handle it properly, and they are healthy even though they have big challenges. So I hope and pray that all of us will be able to have the right amount of oxytocin, especially when we are under pressure, when we are under challenging circumstances. And I believe this is a gift from God. The Bible is telling us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I believe even though in hardship, in crisis, in pandemic, God will always provide everything for us. Okay, so again, but you know what? If you are already here, like you are afraid, you are having the negative feelings like mad or upset or, or stressed out, the moment you just change your belief, it will immediately turn to this. So this is a miracle. The moment you just change, and this is the reason why we are celebrating God's goodness here in church, the moment you come here, you worship and you sing song. Earlier, we were singing, Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And that's the beautiful theme song for our 105th anniversary. And imagine every morning we sing the song, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And when we say new mercies I see, we are now putting something in our mind that will really rewire the right thinking, the right thoughts. Continue singing. Continue praying. Continue sharing. And when we do that, this is the best and most effective way of downloading the right beliefs. Now, going back again to this shift. Okay, so this is now shift from the stress response to the relaxation response. One author in the book of Lisa Rankin, Mind Over Medicine, she was telling it's not just oxytocin. That is very important, especially when you just change the belief. It is also your endorphin. It is also your serotonin. It is also your nitric oxide that will vasodilate your blood vessel, that will keep the blood vessel healthy. It prevents white blood cells and platelets from becoming sticky. And it keeps the smooth muscle cells of your whole blood circulatory to really be protected from diseases. And this is the reason why we really need to know the good news. The good news is the body has the ability to heal itself, given the best environment by God's grace. So God's grace is sufficient. One day I was talking to a patient, and the patient is doctor in psychology, and he is not believing in God, and he told me I'm an atheist. And I have this little boy. His name is Kael. Um, that's Marlon's son, Reyes' uh, son. So they are staying with us. And he was just playing. You know, I, I, my table was, I was standing. I have a high, high chair and high table. And he was just playing um, on the carpet. And then the patient said, he started saying, hi, hi, sir. And then the patient said, how are you, boy? And he said, my name is Kael. And how are you? And he answered, I am good by God's grace. <laughs> because this boy, he kept on hearing from us the word, I am good by God's grace. Sometimes he was crying and he's feeling some pain in the body. But if you ask immediately, he would say, how are you, Kael? I am good by God's grace, even in, in, in pain. And the psychologist said, you know, that's wrong in psychology. 
And now we started, you know, sharing notes. And he said, in psychology, if you're feeling mad, you say, I'm mad. And I, you know, if I'm angry, say, you shout, I'm angry. And then I started listening to him and started, I, I let him finish his, his statements, his comments. And then after his talk, his, I told him, you know, doctor, I will also say I am good by God's grace. You know, right? sometimes people can hurt me. People can do me wrong. But even in the middle of the crying, I can still say I am good by God's grace. God has provided me air to breathe. God has given me everything. And God will give me the strength to recover from this pain. I am still good by God's grace. So we had a long talk for six months. Every week we we change we we share experiences and every week i teach him and after six months he started saying you know what blessing i'm also good by god's grace so it's very nice to hear these words from an atheist i am good by god's grace we are all good by god's grace and i hope that when we say we are good by god's grace we are building a strong belief. I am good by God's grace. Whatever happens, I'm still good by God's grace. In the middle of crisis, I'm still good by God's grace. In the middle of sickness, I am still good by God's grace. Or in, even in the middle of challenges, in the middle of trials, I am still good by God's grace. For the past week, I was telling you about the plates, right? And this is my favorite illustration. So I have here three items. Okay. So my plate here, and those of you who were here last time, you know that this represents things outside my control and outside my influence. So here comes the pandemic, here comes the war, here comes a crisis, or here comes a death. So I cannot just command the sun. Sun is included here. Weather, typhoon is here. I cannot just command the sun or the rain to stop because I know that they are outside my control, outside my influence. I cannot just command the war to stop. They are outside my control, outside my influence. So the red thing here is God is in control 100%. The second item I was telling you last time is the smaller item here. And this is outside my control, but maybe I can influence. So this is other people's thoughts, feelings, actions, habits, attitudes, beliefs, ways. Outside my control, but maybe I can influence. The only thing I can influence, I can control is me. My thoughts, my actions, my feelings, my habits, my beliefs, my ways, my attitude. I am 100% responsible to this. When I say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, it's me. I cannot do, I cannot, I don't have contribution to the, to the weather. But I can, I am responsible 100% and I can do all things pertaining to my attitude, pertaining to my thinking, beliefs, and ways and action, I'm 100% in charge. Here, maybe this is from 0 to 100. I can only influence. The range again is 0 to 100. I don't know if the person is willing to accept my influencing. Okay. So again, when I put these items and I place in there, and I say, I am in charge of myself. So, but again... I was telling you earlier that we are very much in, you know, having or giving attention to the feelings. But we never even forget that it came from the thought. And later on, we now understand that it is because of the belief. So when I say, when I say, I am in charge here, 100%, in the belief, I need to rewire or to download good beliefs. 
100% good beliefs. But you know what? This will not, this is this is dependent on the belief. But I was telling you again that we when we download download the belief, this will overflow to the second item and the people around us will be able to also feel and experience what we are experiencing. So tonight, I'd like to give you an illustration. And some of you, the first, those of you who just um, attended my seminar for the first time, I'm using the plates so that you can also share it with people. And this is one of the best, you know, uh, table conversation because you have already the plates, you have the glass, and you can, you can even add or you can even modify this uh, teaching. Now, this illustration. Now, I was telling you earlier about the dysfunctional belief. And when you pour to yourself, fill yourself with a lot of false teaching, it will overflow to you and it will even overflow to your children. Can you now see? So, if the parents have this functional beliefs, it will also be experienced by the people around you. And it's so sad if you are the parents. If your thoughts, if your beliefs are wrong, your children will also have that wrong belief. So again, can you see? The influencing is very important. So again, for young children, influencing, and you can still control if they are still children, if they are still young. But when they are already adult, what you can do is just to influence, to inspire, to motivate. So can you see? This is very, very important to understand, especially to parents. No? We need to understand that our actions, our practices, can influence our children. So have you seen um, parents watching or nakababad sa telesere? Yung mga anak, nakababad na rin sa telesere. <laughs> so that will really happen at home. Those children who are inclined of the politics, you see, children are also shouting the politics. <laughs> so what's really installed in us is also experienced by the people around us. And it's so so scary if the beliefs is wrong and in the bible we are saying we keep on saying create in me a clean heart O lord and renew my spirit so it's it's impossible for us just to clear this dysfunctional belief that will lead to dysfunctional thoughts that will lead to dysfunctional feelings it's next to impossible if we don't have the spirit to help us. So when we say, create in us a clean spirit, O Lord, so we really need to remove all this. Minsan, mas mahirap maglinis eh. Prevention is still better than cure, no? Protection still better than solution. Kaya mas maganda. If we can have the clean spirit, and later on, we pour another one, and that is, we need to clean this first. Okay. Create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord. We don't want these dirty things, dysfunctional things in us. And then later on, we will say, Oh, I was telling you last time, my cup ran it over. So when it is filled with purity and your belief is really based on the Bible, not based on telesere. You will be able to bless people around you with that kind of belief. So again, we need to reevaluate ourselves. We really need to reevaluate the belief. No, I was yesterday I was talking to a pre person. You know, um, the daughter died, and the daughter was um, 34 years old, medical student. She was really crying. And the belief is wrong. This functional belief. Because she was believing that the daughter will go to another spirit or to go to the other families. And it is reincarnation belief. 
So I was telling her, we need to change the belief because the belief will lead to the feelings. And you know, for several hours, I started teaching her about the state of the dead and you know, the blessed hope and the resurrection. And it's, it, it's lighter to hear this kind of information than just hearing that the body will go to another person and will go to another creatures. And after that, you know, it's like a chaos spirit, right? So again, this is just an example of downloading of beliefs. And I hope and pray that when we help other people, we first evaluate the belief. Because from the belief, we will be able to create thoughts. And from that thoughts, we can create something better, okay? When it comes to feelings, when it comes to actions and habits and attitude, we can, we can make it, you know, straight and we can make it in accordance to God's will. The Bible is telling us, blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made their God their confidence, their Lord their confidence. They are like trees planted along the river banks with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by long months of drought. Their leaves stay, stay green and they never stop producing fruits. You know, blessed are those. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. And I hope that when we start believing, when we start trusting, when we start downloading in our thoughts, in our mind, we are aligned to God's thoughts. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made their God their confidence. We are like trees planted along the river banks with roots that reach deep into the water. And I hope and pray that our beliefs is really deep into the water. The source of the real water and the source of the living water is Jesus Christ. Even though there is chaos, even though there, is pressure, there are pressures, even though there are some challenges in life, even though there are, there are some sufferings like health, if our roots are really into the water, the right source of water, even though in crisis, we can still produce the green leaves and we can still produce the delicious fruits. And I hope as we celebrate our 105th anniversary here in church, we will still produce the, the, the delicious fruits. We will still we will still bless other people, people around us with beautiful lives in us, with beautiful produced in us. And this is, I be personally believe, the best blessings that the community will receive from us when we are really blessing people even in times of crisis. May you be blessed as we bless other people. Thank you very much. That's an additional blessing uh, to us tonight. Shall we repeat it? I am good by God's grace. May I invite everybody to say it again? I am good by God's grace. We should remember that because sometimes we wake up in the morning and um, we already are anticipating problems for the day. But we should always say, at fir the first thing in the morning, I am good by God's grace. Thank you so much for your message, ma'am. We are very blessed tonight. And for those of you who are impressed to um, give your offerings tonight, uh, we are inviting everybody to please come to the... Uh, just drop your offerings uh, somewhere at the middle of, of the church. And it will also be flashed. Our accounts also will be flashed. Uh, for those who are um, watching this online, you can also um, give your offerings through the accounts flashed on the screen. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Happy midweek.
For our closing song, let us all rise and sing our theme song, Find Us Faithful. like to praise you and honor you and give glory to you dear father for you're always leading us and we believe dear father that you will never leave us nor forsake us help us dear father to continually be inspired to put good beliefs 
in our mind so that it will lead good thoughts and it will also create good feelings and later on dear father it will make beautiful relationships in within our families in our, our community and also in this church and may our footprints that we leave will lead for them that looking at us seeing us to you jesus christ and they will be able also to enjoy obeying you and we believe their father that this can happen because you will always pour the blessing in us the spirit that we need thank you dear father for being so good to us and may we be able to lift your name on high in every day that we live and morning by morning we can see good mercies so that we can also bless people around us thank you dear father that in these last days we can shine for you and we can continue shining till you come in jesus name we pray amen Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall deliver us from the hand of the enemy? Who shall take us from his hand? Nothing can separate you from his love. His love conquers. His love restores. His love sets you free. His love is greater than life itself. No force can defeat him. No power can overthrow him. No throne or dominion can outrank him the love of christ is stronger than your sin the love of christ is stronger than your entanglement the love of christ is stronger than your bondage only christ can break you free from the torment of the past only christ can loose the bands of wickedness only christ can break every yoke of bondage let his love lift your burdens let his love Break your yoke. Let His love give you purpose. Let His love give you peace. His love is weighty. His love is mighty. His love is strong. His love has no end. Seek His love. Pursue His love. Crave for His love. Choose the love of Christ. <laughs>